TV. Welcome to Oxford Scugog Life. I'm your host, Jackie Hermans. So things are opening up this week. Kind of exciting. Uh, there's still confusion though, I have to tell you. I'm still very confused. I had one of my kids had a bit of a cold. So I'm like, all right, what are we supposed to do here? Maybe, okay. So, you know, checked with Health uh, Ontario. They're supposed to, you know, so we're all supposed to self-isolate for five days. But then you call the school and the school's like, well, if they pass the COVID checks and they don't have any symptoms, your other kids, it's okay. They can go to school. I, I don't know about you, but there, there's lots of gray going on. There's still lots of gray. So good luck. And uh, But we're going to have a great show. I am totally 100% positive about that. We're going to be talking to the Scugog uh, Hall of Fame. Well, actually, to Leanne Ashbridge of the Scugog Hall of Fame, talking about uh, the latest inductions coming up. We'll be talking to Jody Boussier about downhill skiing, common injuries, and how to prevent them. And Elizabeth LaBelle will be talking to us from the Durham Humane Society about what to do if you got a gift as a pet and you don't know what to do with them. So we'll be right back with more on Oxford School Gog Life. This program is brought to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit rogers.com for more details. Jennifer. And I'm Allison. Coming up on the next parenting show, we're talking about survival tips for staying sane and motivated during the pandemic. We all need a boost to get out of languishing, and we're going to give you some tips. Welcome back to Oxbridge Scugog Life. So with me now on the show is Jody Boussier, who is a local physiotherapist, and Jody's going to talk to us today. Hey, Jody! So, uh, Jody's hey. going to talk to us today about downhill skiing, the common injuries, and how to prevent them. So, hey, Jody, welcome. Thank you. All right, you look so a little warmer than me. <laughs> oh, pardon me. Say that again. You look a little warmer than me right now. Yes, I think I am. I went for my dog walks this morning. It took me a while to thaw. I'm grateful to be in the house, <laughs> but thank you for doing this. So Jody, what are the most common downhill skiing injuries that you see? So what we tend to see are a lot of knee injuries because you've got two skis that are separate on the snow. So you see a lot of twisting, sprains, strains of the knees. Um, injuries to the upper body are also really common. So people will fall and injure their wrists or their shoulders or their hands. And then the other most common injury, unfortunately, is concussions. Um, so it's great that people are starting to wear helmets the last couple of decades, whereas we didn't when I was a kid, um, because that really helps prevent concussions. Okay, so Jody, can you lead us off with what are some what are some things that we can do before we start skiing to make sure that our body is at least warmed up? Okay, so this is where I'm actually gonna have to stand up and show you um, because contrary to what we used to do when we were younger, um, a proper warm up really is just about doing some moves to warm up all the muscles in the body that you're gonna use. It's not about stretching that we're gonna show you at the end of this session. So I'm going to move back and show you some moves that if I was in my ski gear on the ski hill, really simple and easy and fast to do. So let's see if we can work. All right. So what I 
would do, I'm in my ski boots and my ski gear, is I would just do some squats. I'm just warming up my leg muscles, getting those uh, areas of the body that I'm going to be using during skiing going. You could even do some lunges. Just take a little lunge forward. Do them with both legs. And you can do this in the snow. You can do this in the parking lot. You can do this anywhere. So do a bunch of those. Okay. Take the poles behind your back. And you can do some twists. And of course, you're going to do more than I'm showing you. We're just doing this quickly for the show. You can take your poles above your head. And you can go side to side. You're warming up your trunk muscles, which you're going to use when you're skiing. And then one last thing I would add is take your ski poles and just move your arms back and forth. Be careful you don't spike somebody with your pole, but you use your arms a lot when you're skiing. So even though that seems very simple, if you do a couple of minutes of all that, you've got the legs going, you've got the trunk going, you've got the arms going. And then the other important thing actually is when you go to the top of the hill to do your first run, don't do a black diamond run. Do a circle or a square run. Do a simpler run so that you're getting your body warmed up for the harder things that you want to do later. That's pretty much it. Makes sense. Okay, so start with a circle or a square run to get yourself uh, nicely warmed up and then work your way up to the diamonds. Okay, so Jody, can you take us through some stretches that let's say you, you would do after you finish skiing? Right, so really important to leave that passive stretching to the end. And these are the most common ones that will help you. Because we use our legs a lot, our quad muscles. If we balance with our poles and we stretch our quads, then that's a really important one to do. And of course, you're gonna do both sides. Second one I would add is just put your toe up, your heel down, bend over, and you'll stretch the back of your leg, which really is your hamstring muscles. And of course, you're going to do both legs. You hold everything about 20 or 30 seconds. Another one I would do, put your poles out to the side so you can balance. Lunge, so you're stretching your inner thigh, stretching your groin muscles. We use our hips a lot in skiing, so that's going to feel really good. Of course, you're going to do both sides. And the last one I would add is for the arms. So I put my poles out in front of me. I lean over, and it feels so good if you just stretch your head between your arms and you're going to feel all of your upper back um, and trunk muscles and probably your legs like muscle stretching which is really great that should do it nice. okay beautiful now jody the next day or even two days later that's when you might be feeling your body right you're like oh, okay i really felt like i went skiing do you recommend at that point do a little bit of warm up again and then do some stretching again to be able to work work through those muscles Absolutely. So um, delayed onset muscle soreness usually peaks at around 24 to 48 hours after exercise. So that's really all you're feeling is your muscles are, are taxed from what you did. So yeah, more training, more regular skiing, maybe some workouts on the side to keep you in shape and just keep up with this routine. You should be all right. Beautiful. Now, our age group, I would say, uh, you, you said this at the beginning, we're not used to wearing helmets. And, uh, but now when I have, you know, used one of my son's helmets, I feel so much safer. Are you going to show us your helmet, Jody? Absolutely. I have to tell you, I've finally converted and it not only helps prevent concussions, but it keeps your head warm too. So this is an absolute must. Um, you don't see very many people on the hill anymore without a helmet. So you can't really protect your brain. Your brain is the most important part of your body. It yeah. controls things. So everyone, wear your helmet and uh, hopefully you won't fall. But if you do, you're going to protect your head this way. Beautiful. Jody. thank you so much. And you look super sexy in your helmet. Thank you so uh, much for coming on the show for those great tips. We will be right back with more on Oxford Scoop Gog Life. The world's most famous Canadian, Grey Owl, just back from a triumphant British tour, 
is to be a reluctant guest at a gathering of First Nations. Archie, you may not realize this, but right now you are the most famous Red Indian in the world. These are your people. You have to be there. Come on, Harold. Let's go. Sure, I'm sure. His name is Archie Bellini. And if he's a Red Indian, I'm the king of China. It is an honor to meet the man called Grey Owl, who has brought much respect for our people. Imposter, rascal, dreamer. <laughs> and yet the Englishman who called himself Grey Owl <laughs> awoke the whole world to our vanishing wilderness. My brother says, men become what they dream. You have dreamed well. God life. So now with me on the show is Leanne Ashbridge, who's the chairperson, I'm slurring my words today, who's the chairperson of the Scugog Sports Hall of Fame. Welcome to the show, Leanne. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. I just had to slow down my wording today. So now <laughs> I think I'm good. <laughs> so really exciting. You have a, an event planned. I think it's for April the 21st, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. And it's for uh, to bring a new inductee to the Sports Hall of Fame. That's correct. So uh, if all goes well, and if this event happens, which my fingers are crossed, I'm, very, I'm feeling very positive it's going to, what type of festivities will be happening? Well, for the inductees, they're invited to an inductee dinner where they get to share stories and talk about their experiences in sport and what have you. And we, we do that right at the arena. And then after the dinner is over, we invite the public, anybody's welcome to come to the arena, to the community center. And we have a ceremony where the inductees that have been selected are piped into the uh, recreation hall. And then uh, we have a keynote speaker and uh, that this year is going to be uh, Mr. Gary Edgar from our uh, Mississaugas uh, of Scugog Island. He used to be the um, chief of the Mississaugas and now he lives here in Port Perry. He's a lifetime resident of Scugog. Uh, an all-round sports person and athlete himself. He was, in, he was one of our first inductees in 2007, and he's going to speak to us about his experiences uh, playing sports as a youth in Skugog. He uh, was also a very uh, successful coach, and he was the um, recipient of the Tom Longboat Award, which is uh, awarded to Aboriginal athletes who are very successful in their sports. So uh, interesting to hear him and excited to hear him talk about all of those experiences, what it was like for him to be the recipient of that most prestigious award. He was also um, a torch bearer in the last Pan Am Games. So he has lots of stuff to talk to us about. Um, our MC for the evening will be Sean Lackey, and I know Rogers TV is familiar with him, so we're excited to have Sean as our MP, as our MC. He was uh, a former member of our committee, and uh, we were glad to have him come back in this capacity. Um, the inductees will each get an opportunity to speak after they've received their award, um, and they will um, be able to tell us about, you know, what it means to them to be inducted and what experiences they had in the sport that they were involved in. Now, I know at this point you can't let us know who uh, the inductees will be. Can you let us know how many will be inducted? Yes, I can. Um, we have one builder, one person in the builder category, um, and we have three athletes who are all actually from the same family. And we have a team. Uh, our team this year isn't a traditional team. It's actually a team of coaches who have inspired um, young athletes throughout many generations. So that is what we're doing. Um, we're also going to be celebrating two uh, organizations that have reached their 50th anniversary. So I can tell you that we will be celebrating the Port Perry Mojacks, who are 50 years this year, and the Port Perry Snowmobile Club that is also celebrating 50 years of an organization, so. Oh, that's fabulous. Yeah. Now, there's also more cause for celebration. I understand you have more exhibit space. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? 
We do. In 2008, uh, the township agreed to give us permanent space above uh, the Pad 2 Arena at the Skugog Heritage Centre, what was then the Skugog Heritage Centre. And so there is a permanent exhibit there um, of a lot of our collection. Um, but this past fall, we also got uh, additional space in the lower part of the arena adjacent to Pad 2, close to where the Hall of Fame displays all of the inductees uh, pictures. And uh, this fall, we made the exhibit all about uh, sports that are in Skugog in the wintertime. And so we are quite thrilled that we have a signed jersey from Ty Delandra from the uh, junior Canadian uh, juniors competition. And uh, we have a number of other articles from curling, from hockey, uh, lots of clothing from different um, players that have been inducted previously in the Hall of Fame. We have some speed skates that were from the 1930s, which is really interesting to see. Um, this spring, our um, thought is, is that we will change up that exhibit and we will go through our collection and start to display all of the summer sports items that we have in our collection. Oh, very exciting. So I understand you, you cover sports, anything from curling to horseback riding to motorcycles to uh, tennis, everything. Yes, we do. We have a number of things. We have some unusual things. We have uh, canoeists. We have skiers in our Hall of Fame, uh, water skiers and snow skiers. Um, as I said, we have a horse that uh, was not a racehorse. We have a racehorse in the Hall of Fame. Uh, we have a number of very successful hockey and softball and baseball teams that have been inducted over the years as well. And we have collections associated with almost all of those sports. Now, what I want to recommend for everyone is to go to your website because your website has a beautiful gallery of uh, displaying all of the inductees thus far. And there's also the place to get the nomination forms if you want to nominate someone in the community as well as upcoming events. Do you want to tell everyone what that website is? Yes, it's uh, Skugog Sports Hall of Fame. You just put that in your uh, browser and it'll bring you right to the Township of Skugog's website. Um, we actually have a number of pages within that website. And uh, as you mentioned, we can uh, get lots of information there. And uh, you can also donate to the Hall of Fame to help us preserve our collection. Um, so there's a quick donate button. So we would have ha happily accept any donations to help us preserve our collection. Well, thank you so much, Leanne. It was wonderful to have you on the show. We will be right back with more on Oxford Skugog Life. Thank you so much. When we turn a blind eye to racism, we turn a blind eye to ourselves. As Canadians, we disavow all forms of racism. Built on a foundation of cultural acceptance, we choose inclusion promote equality, and celebrate diversity. Choose health, not hate. My daughter is seven years old and has a frenemy. They have play dates that always end up in a fight or tears. This friend bosses her around and treats her poorly, but she still wants to be her friend. What's a parent to do? I would let them acquiesce to a certain amount. And then, you know, when they're at this age, you still need to be supervising their play dates. So I might step in, not to correct the bossy child, but it's my child that I'm concerned about. I would just expose her to other people, teach her to have a voice, and yeah. let her know that she's got options. Welcome back to Uxbridge Skugog Life. So now we're going to be talking to Elizabeth LaBelle from the Durham Humane Society. I had the pleasure of interviewing her just a little while back, and we were talking about what if you happen to get a puppy or a, a cute dog for Christmas, and you just don't know how to take care of it. So Elizabeth is going to give us some tips here. So let's, I'm going to throw you to the interview right now. Here we go. Welcome back to Oxford Skugog Life. I love it. I have Elizabeth LaBelle again on the show from the, the Durham Humane Society. How are you, Elizabeth? I'm good. How are you guys? Very good. And so is Gracie. You got Gracie here again? Yes. 
<laughs> so um, during the holidays, you know, sometimes people get pets for the holidays, right? The, oh, yeah. it'll be so nice. I'll get them a poppy. And then, <clears throat> but I'm sure there's some people out there that are, I don't want a, a dog or I don't even know how to care for a dog or do you have any advice of what people can now do now that they might be like, oh, what do I do with this? Yeah. I mean, anytime that you're bringing an animal into the home, there's going to be a change in the dynamics because you're adding a member to your family. Um, so if somebody has gifted you with um, a pet this holiday season and you aren't sure how to care for it, or you're realizing that it needs more care than you're able to provide, definitely reaching out to family and friends and seeing if you have anyone who is ready to take on that level of care. Um, first and foremost, keeping them in the family is your best option. Um, but if you can't do that, definitely it is the most responsible thing and it takes a lot of courage to reach out to a shelter and ask for help. Asking for help is the first step to, to fixing the circumstances that you're in. Um, so if you if you feel like it's overwhelming you, don't hesitate to call us because we'd love to have a conversation with you. We'd love to either help you sort out the circumstance so that you can keep the pet in your home if that's what you wanna do, or if you need help rehoming them to someone who is ready to take on the responsibility and level of care that's gonna be needed for the animal and perhaps it's just more than you can handle, we're happy to help figure that out with you as well. Yeah, because for some, it might simply be the fear of, I've never had a pet before. I, I just don't know if I can even handle it. I, you know, and so maybe just having a conversation with uh, someone who knows about dogs and how to care for dogs can create that comfort level, that reassurance to help them to be able to handle it. But Absolutely. it is like having a, an extra child in the house, right? Like they, it they definitely is. Bed and, and they need, the, they need the love. Yeah, and it's it really changes the dynamic in the home, especially um, if you have kids in the home too and you're trying to teach them the responsibility of owning a pet. Um, but you're right, with dogs, it's a whole extra task in the day um, in certain regards. You're, you're taking them for walks every single day. Um, you have to train them how to um, be house trained in the house or obedience training. There's so many things that go into owning a pet. Um, and that can be overwhelming at times. And so our goal here, especially when we're sending animals home, is to set all of our adopters up for success. And if you've gotten a pet, but it's not from us, still call us because we want to help you. We want to we want to see everyone succeed with their pets in their home and have a good experience when they're adopting, when they're getting an animal into their home. We want to do everything we can to make it as calm and as peaceful a transition as possible. Beautiful. Now, throughout COVID, I understand there's a lot of COVID puppies. A lot of people have gotten dogs and then now they're being sent back to work. And mm -hmm. so I understand some families are now, well, what do we do with this dog? Because we work so many hours, we're not in the home. Mm -hmm. So now, I, what advice do you have um, for those types of, for the families that are having issues such as that? Yeah, so very similar. If you're feeling overwhelmed by having this animal in your home, um, there are a few things you can do. For starters, you can reach out to a shelter for that same advice. You can look into training facilities. There's a lot of doggy daycares out there that are ready to um, have your dog come in as a client during the day while you're at work. Your dog is hanging out with other dogs, doing their thing. Um, you can also look at rehoming the animal if that's what you think is best for the animal at that time. There are lots of people who who might be overwhelmed by the circumstance and just need to talk it through. Um, so it, there's so many avenues um, for people who got puppies and um, dogs during COVID. There were a lot of limitations. You couldn't do the same level of training or socialization with other animals. So there are a lot of dogs and um, puppies that we're seeing come in here who do have um, this delayed um, opportunity to to have those skills. So it is something that a lot of owners are finding that they have to still work through. It is something that has posed a challenge for a lot of dog owners. And that's okay because we wanna make sure that everyone understands there was, no, there was so little that all of us could do during that time. And so now it's just about making sure that we continue to do our best to set these animals up for success for the rest of their lives. Nice. Well, I'm so glad you guys are there. And a couple of the doggy daycares that just popped into my head, I thought I'd mention them. There's so many 
amazing ones out there, I'm sure, but um, mm -hmm. Palace came to mind that are in Uxbridge. Um, I know a lot of neighbors who have also gone to Dogs at Camp. Mm -hmm. where I think they have like a pond on their property, not necessarily the best this time of year, um, but there's a lot of, you know, and they have trails to walk on, lots of outdoor mm -hmm. space to run in. Um, I can't remember the name of the other one that I've taken my dogs to before that is right on um, Goodwood Road. So okay. There's, yeah, there's lots of doggy daycares out there for uh, Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much, Elizabeth. Great to have you on the show. Thank you. It's been great to talk to you. Bye. We'll be right back with more on Oxford Scugog Live. Hello, I'm Liz Dowdswell, Lieutenant Governor of Ontario. In 2008, carbon monoxide, a deadly invisible gas, killed an entire family in our province. That tragedy led to a new law requiring homes with potential CO sources to have alarms. John Gignac's family members passed away that day, and he shares his story to save others. Please make sure you have working CO alarms in your home. Protect your family today. Hi, I'm Constable Darrell Rice, Durham Regional Police Service. Tune into Rogers Cable 10 to watch me on Seniors Talk with DRPS, where we'll talk about all kinds of amazing information and community programs for you, our seniors in Durham Region. I'm Eric Marchinosa, Cinema Scene in Review. Join me for a monthly movie roundup of new releases either in theaters or available to stream. See you next time in Review. Welcome back to Oxford Scugog Life. Yes, Chewy. Chewy wanted to say goodbye as well. He's standing at attention for you there. So that was a great show, I must say myself. <laughs> and it was really fun. And uh, really great tips from Jody. So if you're gonna be downhill skiing, or maybe you're gonna be snowboarding, cross country skiing, make sure you get that warm up in. And uh, then also stretch afterwards and maybe stretch 24 to 48 hours after. And um, how about that helmet? So if you're gonna be doing the downhill skiing, you're gonna be doing the snowboarding, protect that brain. Now, if you're interested in being on the show, please contact us. So you can email us at UxbridgeScugogLife at rci.rogers.com. That is UxbridgeScugogLife at rci.rogers.com. If you know anything that's going on around town, if you have a skill, an event, uh, uh, maybe you're starting a new business, let's help you get the word out there and let's uh, inform our community about the awesomeness that we have going on. So we'll be back next week with more on Oxford Scugog Live. the Rogers TV viewer response line. Email us or connect with us on social media. I never thought I'd know that feeling. To be in love. Because for us, it was a crime. Someone had to respond to the tabloids. So I wrote letters, challenging every misconception of homosexuality. Nine homes, seven dogs, 47 years together, and still not spouses under the law. So we took our fight to the Supreme Court. Jim Egan and Jack Nesbitt await a verdict on their fight for spousal rights.